Hello everyone, my name is Anton, and if you're new, welcome to the channel, and if you're returning, I'm glad to have you back. Previously, I released a video where I talked about using tags. I gave some tips on how to create a system for tags that can be used universally across different systems and applications. And in the follow-up video, I showed how to use tags in Obsidian. I also uploaded a detailed video on how to use backlinks in Obsidian. I'll leave a link to those videos in the description. All of those videos gave you a desktop perspective uh, because, well, at the moment, Obsidian does not have a mobile application. Well, today I'm going to show you how to leverage both tags and backlinks that you've created in Obsidian on your, on your mobile device. I find that this is extremely useful, especially since we all at least carry our phones just about everywhere. And if you want to access your stored knowledge that you're capturing in Obsidian just about everywhere without lugging around your laptop, continue watching this video. But before I get into the video, go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. I release videos like this just about every week and it really helps the uh, YouTube algorithms get this information out to other people. With that done, let's get on with the video. Now I'm going to apologize in advance because this video only caters to the iOS users out there. So I apologize if you have an Android device, this particular video will not work for you. But if you're an iPhone or an iPad user, let's get into it. With recent aspirations to find a quote unquote obsidian for mobile, I tested a few different applications and eventually boiled things down to just one winner. The one and only application that really gave me both the support for tags and the support for backlinks using the Wikilink format style that's used in Obsidian. And that application ended up being OneWriter for iOS. Now, OneWriter is basically a text editing application. Um, it runs on both iPhone and iPad. And there is a cost for it, but at the time of this video, it's only $4.99. And that $4.99 is, is also a one-time cost, so you don't have to worry about a subscription where you're paying monthly or every year. To use this application with your Obsidian Vault, you can use either iCloud or Dropbox. This is how you're going to get your mobile device, your phone or your, or your iPad tablet to have access to the Obsidian Vault because right now Obsidian is just a desktop application that manages files locally on your particular desktop or laptop. OneWriter works extremely well with Dropbox, but if you plan to use iCloud, you will have to put your Obsidian Vault in the iWriter application directory in iCloud. You can't put it outside of that particular directory because if you don't, you will probably see the same issue that I did where OneWriter shows hashtags as headings. Now, hopefully they've fix this issue or bug sometime soon, but it, so long as you're putting the folders in the right place, if you're using iCloud, um, you should not have any problems. And if you use Dropbox, I have not found any issues with Dropbox. So my Obsidian Vault is already on Dropbox, it's already syncing to my different mobile devices, the iPhone and my iPad. So. Let's go ahead and move over to the device and show this working on the iPhone. And understand that everything I show you on the iPhone will work on the iPad as well. The only issue is that there, there are uh, actions that you can um, create, customize actions. Those do not sync from one device to the other. I found that once you, when you create them on one device, you will not see those on another device. You will have to recreate those or copy the code. Okay, so I'm going on my iPhone here and we have the 
OneWriter application. Install the application and by default you end up with this particular view. You can down in the right corner here you have a button to add a file and in the left bottom corner there's the three dots here for getting into the actions. So be, before I get into the functionality of how the app works and everything, let's go ahead and connect up our Obsidian Vault to uh, this particular app. Now, in order to do that, you will need to go into the settings. So if you hit the, the top hamburger menu there and you go to this little gear for the settings, you'll see the services. We'll click on that. And you can see here, I already have my Dropbox linked, but if you don't, go ahead and click on here and add your Dropbox account to the services. Now, once you have Dropbox connected, then what you really need to do is just go ahead and add a folder. You would browse to your Dropbox. And again, this works on iCloud, except for iCloud, again, you will have to copy your Obsidian Vault to the actual folder for OneWriter. Now I'm in Dropbox here. I'm gonna to go to Obsidian and I'm gonna add my vault. And then I'm just gonna click on the bottom here where it says choose this folder. Now this folder is added here. We can see Planet Earth, that's the name of the vault. And right now, just from this particular screen, we can see all the folders and if we tap on this tags at the top, you see where it says folders and tags, you can see it brought in all the tags that I'm using and it puts everything in alphabetical order. And from here, you can actually search your, all of your tags. Now let's go into the Obsidian vault that we just added here and we can see all of the files that are, are, are in the vault. From here, we can, we can, add uh, files in here, we can add folders, we can view the, the, the files that we already have in our vault. And from here, we can see all the, the markdown files that we did in Obsidian. And if we, let's see if we can find one here that has backlinks in it. In this particular file, we do have one with a backlink and uh, if we click on it, you can see that it, it does go to the other file that's in the vault um, directly just by tapping on that link. Now, some of the settings here, let's go back into the settings for OneWriter. And we'll see that, you know, it is pretty customizable. You can add the uh, passcode to this. Uh, we have the hashtags clicked on new file on startup. You have options down at the bottom here to change the default name and the default extension. By default, it's usually, I think it's text and I changed it here, if we click on it, to the MD file extension. And also you could change the default folder where you're, when you create a new file to your vault at that point as well and choose folder. And we can see how that shows up. If we go back to settings, we go into editor. We can also see that there are some things you can change in here, like the characters for bold and italic. You can change those to either have the double asterisk or the underscore, whichever you prefer. The same thing with the italics as well. There are some, also some other settings in here. I won't go through every one of them but uh, you can kind of customize this, the settings here to your liking. You can even change the theme of the application to be light or, or dark, or just have it match whatever the system settings are. Okay, so if we go outside of the, this particular folder here, one additional thing here that you can do with this OneWriter app is if you, tap the three dots at the bottom here, you do get these actions. So the default ones here are the typical, you can, you know, share, copy, print, um, and these particular options that you would typically get for a file out of the box. 
but you can also add custom ones here and this new action at the bottom is a custom one that I, I put in here for adding a template into the file. So if we go and look at this here, now you can use JavaScript. Um, this is what they support right, right now for this particular at these actions. And if you know JavaScript, you can use JavaScript to kind of create these, these custom actions that'll do things automatically for you. So in this particular one here, you can see that I'm grabbing the date and then I'm also putting in uh, you know, if you watch the other videos, I, I do this who, what, when, where, and status uh, properties that I assign tags to. So that's what I'm doing here. And in the when property there, I automatically put the date. And then in the status, I automatically put the, the draft hashtag. Now, if we go ahead and run that, we can run it from there. We can see that it adds the the actual um, text that I, I had in that action where the cursor was. Now, typically I would run this after creating a file, um, but in this case here, we already had some text in there and I, I had the cursor behind here, so that's where it put the uh, text. So having this functionality is very useful. You can do different things with it. Um, in this case, again, I'm just showing a simple use case of adding text to the to your note um, and giving it somewhat of a, a template type style here. So you can do whatever you want with the actions. You just need to know how to use uh, JavaScript. Now, if we go to the default guide that they have here, you can see we're in preview mode, but if we go ahead and click out of there, you can see that it does support the markdown language here. And here are all the things here in the guide that kind of just demonstrates how to use the, the markdown formatting. It does support the, the Wikilink formatted backlinks like you would have in Obsidian. So everything pretty much that you can do from a tagging and backlink perspective you can come into this application and still get the uh, that same functionality. Now, this is not an Obsidian replacement. It's more like a companion, a mobile companion that you can use with Obsidian, so that you can t you can still access your content on the go. Hopefully, you found this this information useful. My name is Anton. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and until the next time, have a good day.